So defund the police's jump from a provocative hashtag to a genuine policy agenda. Police are, I guess, the frontline phalanx of the grand white supremacist conspiracy in this country, and social justice demands their immediate liquidation. This all traces back to a single radical philosophy professor. A professor with a dream. A professor promising a utopia. Angela Davis was born in Birmingham, Alabama, and was the daughter of communist activists. Witnessing the organized white supremacist terror of Alabama at that time, and her parents' politics, pushed her into radical activism in academia. She studied under the German philosopher Herbert Marcuse, whose major intellectual invention is repressive tolerance, a fancy philosophical justification for censoring people with the wrong opinions. Davis became a philosophy professor at UCLA and decided to channel her activist energies into the Black Panthers. There's been a coordinated effort to whitewash the history of the Black Panthers, to kind of paint them as essentially a social services organization with an uncompromising militancy that was just too hot for white America. But this picture gives you a glimpse of their true heart. That's Kim Il-sung and Mao Zedong. The Panthers were dedicated Marxists well after it had become clear their utopias had gotten really, really stabby. Having mass murdering totalitarian thugs as your ideal model of governance was bound to cause some internal power struggles. Here's a single stunning fact. More Black Panther members died at the hands of other Black Panthers than ever died at the hands of the US government. Davis could just not ever ditch the dream of a worker's paradise. She ran for vice president on the Communist Party ticket in the 80s. Davis rockets to international fame in 1971 after she's charged with supplying guns to Panthers attempting a failed prison break. She goes on the run and becomes the third woman ever on the FBI's most wanted list. While on trial, Davis becomes the radical chic embodiment of the grand struggle. Davis is acquitted after spending 18 months in jail, emerging as an international icon. So what's the defining cause of this profit? You know, we need to abolish the police. But what if we ask ourselves, what kind of security do we really need? This is not a rhetorical device. She's not trying to stretch the Overton window to find common ground for police reform. Angela really means it. The idea is not so much that you just open up uh, the prison gates, uh, which wouldn't be a bad idea. I mean, I don't think anything would be substantially different if all of the prisons were open. So what does she suggest we put in place of police? I mean, she spent decades as a celebrated professor, hailed as a moral visionary. Surely she's got a great answer. And that we have to um, figure out how to produce relationships that go beyond the boundaries of space and uh, relationships that exceed the temporalities that we are accustomed to working with. Uh, Sorry, what? But it's a project, it's a revolutionary project. Let me, let me put it that way. We all welcome the revolution. Just how do we stop criminals? It's about re-envisioning. It's about building anew. Is there any place on planet Earth that is invented, that has come up with the system you described? And this is precisely the reason why we need to allow our imagination mm. uh, to uh, lead us uh, in a direction uh, that uh, may uh, mean that we um, uh, want something that has never actually existed in the world before. I mean, I don't mean to be a bad ally here, but I'm beginning to suspect that abolish the police is not a serious policy project. That maybe it's a, a dangerously naive idea embraced by people that 
don't have a lot of experience with crime. The abolition of prisons necessitates the building of institutions of care, of care and repair institutions. And so in that sense, you know, and, um, and uh, addressing our, our needs, our emotional needs and uh, treating people in a very different way. But there will be a lot of care work to do. So Davis's grand abolitionist dreams have been injected directly into the political mainstream. She's a hero of the new generation of radicals. She even wrote the foreword for the book written by one of the three founders of Black Lives Matter. And she's worshiped at its rallies. We have to abolish rather than fix the system. The system cannot be fixed. In the mainstream press has portrayed her as a visionary civil rights leader stripping away all the nasty bits about her biography. Grade school students are taught about her glories. And the epicenter of last summer's protests has started operationalizing her fantasies. The Minneapolis City Council has cut nearly $8 million from its police budget, disbanding specialty units focused on violent crime and shaving down street officers by a third. Davis is getting what she asked for. The result? Homicides are up 50%. The city suffered a five-year high in violent crimes last year, including over 4,600 carjacking and robberies. This is what creatively exploring new terrains of justice feels like for the people that actually have to live it. You cannot disband and, and dismantle a police department and leave communities such as this. Every single night on any block in this neighborhood, you can hear gunshots every single freaking night. When we are in harm, when we are hurt, when there is something that is taking place, there is no one else for us to call. Because they're thinking that, oh yeah, less police force, that means we can go and have whatever kind of fun we want to have. Shooting up everybody, killing people, killing teenagers in the middle of the day. Don't just sit there and let your city go down to the ruins. Do something for us. Well, there's no single simple meaning of the term revolutionary. You have to completely revolutionize the entire fabric of society.